Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Time Lancers. Yes, this game is designed by Juliana Chang, Kenny Height, Lee Ho, as well as Teresa Ho, and published by Party Tales, who are helping sponsor this video. And in this game, we are Time Lancers in the future who have the ability to go back in time and possibly change the course of history. That's right. We are far in the future where time travel has been created, but also now made illegal because mm -hmm. the people who are trying to abuse that uh, sort of science Science, right? Yep. Yep. And players play as time lancers who have been hired by these politicians to change the past. Yes, they're acting like mercenaries. That's right. And so today we're going to be showing you how to play it. But before we begin, we do need to mention that this is considered a prototype copy of the game, including the rules, which means things are subject to change in the future. Now, if this game is of interest to you, there is a link to the campaign down in the description, which you can check out at your leisure. Lastly, if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we're ready to begin. So if you'd please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for a two-player game of Time Lancers. Welcome to the future. That's it. And so just to kind of give you the lay of the land, each player has their own time machine that mm -hmm. consists of nine different slots for events. And so as you can see, the time machine is quite large. So since this is just a tutorial preview, we are going to be showcasing one player's time machine. Yeah, every player would have their own. And so as hired Time Lancers or mercenaries of sorts, over the course of the game, we're are going to be spending resources to capture various events throughout history mm -hmm. and place them on our time machine. Sometimes players can be hired to repeat an event of history, or sometimes you can be hired to revise that event in history. That's right. Meaning you're going to change the future. Exactly. And so during setup, each player is going to be given an asymmetric faction sheet that basically gives you four goals that you should probably try to complete over the course of the game. Mm -hmm. And so the game is played over the course of several rounds, with players taking turns until the end of the game is triggered which is either when one player has reached all four of their objectives here, mm -hmm. or when a player has captured nine events completely filling their time machine. And since I am the first player, I have the first player token. So on your turn, you're gonna get three movements on the board as well as on your time machine. Mm -hmm. Now when moving on the map, one movement will move your character piece to an adjacent city tile, allowing you to take the action at that city tile, which yep. in this case, the armory will allow me to spend one money for a gun, which is a resource. And so in this game, there are six main types of resources that we're going to be collecting, uh, typically by moving around the map. Mm -hmm. And these resources are what we're going to need to turn in in order to capture these events. Now, when moving around the map, there are a few things to consider. The first thing is when moving, you cannot double back to the same city tile that you just left. So for example, if I'm the purple player, I could not move one space, take that action, and then move back to the armory because I just came from that spot. Mm -hmm. You can, however, move through city tiles that have your opponent's pieces in them, taking the action that's uh, on the city tile itself, mm -hmm. as long as you don't end your entire turn in the same city as another player. Right. So had I started on the armory at the start of my turn and I did these three movements this way, I would activate the action on all three of these city tiles, mm -hmm. which basically just gets me a bunch of resources, right? right? I would get two suitcases, I could spend one money for two time gems, and I could spend one money for a disguise. <laughs> in future rounds, the map will also have one or two enforcers, depending on how many players you're playing at. Mm -hmm. And if an enforcer were on the map, you basically cannot enter that city tile at all. It's like it doesn't exist. Right. Although you'll always know one round in advance where the enforcers are going to go. So you know to avoid those spots. But if you end your turn in a city tile where an enforcer is going to show up on in the next round, it's going to make you skip your entire turn. Yeah. So make sure to not do that. And so like I was mentioning earlier, a majority of these city tiles are going to get you the various resources that you'll need in order to capture events. Mm -hmm. Some tiles will get you money. Some tiles will allow you to do special things like copying a different city tile, maybe if you're too far away. Yep. And some city tiles get you time gems, just like the Time Lancer headquarters which is actually a very special place. Mm -hmm. The Time Lancer headquarters is the only city tile that can occupy more than one player. Mm -hmm. And this is because everybody's time machines are at that location. Right. And so while you are at the headquarters, you can spend one movement to basically move from the headquarters tile to any spot on your time machine, mm -hmm. taking the action there. So for example, I could spend one movement to move onto this spot, which will allow me to capture an event and repeat it in history. Mm -hmm. And so each player's time machine has nine different actions. And in order to take an action, you also have to spend a certain number of time gems that are listed above the action. So in this case, in order to take this action, Monique has to spend one time gem. Which fortunately we have. There you go. And so this action is going to allow me 
to capture and repeat an event that's from modern history. That's what the M represents. Mm -hmm. And so let's just take a closer look at these events. We have four different types of events that we're going to be trying to capture. We have cultural, uh, military, science, and social events. Mm -hmm. And they're all listed here on your little player sheet. That's right. Now each event looks like this. And so all of the resources that are going to be required in order to capture it is listed on the left. Whereas on the right hand sidebar here, it tells you the type of event, what period of history it's from, which in this case is the Middle Ages. And it will also tell you how much money you'll gain for capturing the event. We have an older prototype, right. but the uh, newer cards are going to have the price on the sidebar. Mm -hmm. The top of the card also shows the name of the event as well as a specific action that you'll get to take now at that specific action spot where you decide to place it, as well as a number of points you'll earn at the end of the game, depending on which side of the card is showing. And I say that because at the top of the card is the name of the event, and on the opposite opposite side is what the revised version of the event will look like. You change history. Exactly. So going back to our example of Monique's turn here, because she's going to be repeating an event that deals with modern history, I see one that's right here that's perfect for you. So mm -hmm. this one, the science of the landing of the moon back mm. in 1969. This is part of one of Monique's objectives here. She wants to repeat two science events. Mm -hmm. So this would be perfect for you right here. So then I would spend the required resources, which are the uh, film camera, the the medical kit, and the att attache case. <laughs> uh, assuming we had them, we would spend those resources. And then you would place the event on any of these spots in your time machine. Mm -hmm. It does not have to be at the spot of the action that you took. Now you're going to have to place your events in chronological order. And so seeing as as this is an event that took place in 1969, I might want to place it further to the right like this. And I would orient it with the name of the actual event face up yep. because I am repeating an event and not revising it. And I'd go ahead and place it just like this. Now, each time I take this specific action, I have an extra action down here, which will allow me to gain two uh, disguise resources. Mm -hmm. And of course, every time you capture an event, you gain money. Yep. So uh, again, our card is different from the way that the cards are going to be like in the final production version. Yeah, so this one says she gets three money. Mm -hmm. Again, we're hired guns here. So we're trying to go <laughs> around history and make some cash. That's right. And that's essentially how capturing repeated events works. Now, I just want to mention that even though our event gave us uh, an extra action mm -hmm. that you can take when going to that action spot, other events will give you ongoing benefits, such as providing a discount on a specific resource. So as you can see, these events are really important for you. You're going to be trying to push your own agenda. Mm -hmm. You're going to get better actions as well as make money so you can get more resources. Now, going back to our time machine, it's important to note that each of these action spaces are technically next to each other. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, I had extra movement, as long as I have enough time gems, I could go to this spot right here mm -hmm. and revise a Middle Ages event. Mm -hmm. I, of course, would have to pay the three time gems, so it's a bit more expensive up here. Sure. And then I would be able to take the action on my newly acquired uh, captured event here, which gets me two disguises. Now, when revising an event, you still capture it in the same way in mm -hmm. that you have to still spend the number of resources on the side, which in this case is going to be two med kits, a disguise, and a film camera. Yeah. You also get money for doing so. But the difference is you're going to use the revised side. And it's going to potentially cause other events belonging to players around the table to flip. Because mm -hmm. that's what happens when you change things in the past, you're changing right? changing the course of history. That's right. So I'd have to place this event to the left of the moon landing right. since it comes earlier in history. Yeah, so maybe I'll place it here. Now it gives me an ongoing effect that allows me to pay one less disguise when paying for things. Mm -hmm. I would earn my money, of course. And then all events around the table that are of the same type but of equal to or later date mm -hmm. then this event right. will get flipped and so as an example because I have my moon landing here which is also a science type event that comes later in history mm -hmm. it gets flipped to its revised side which is actually not good for me no. <laughs> because my objective wants me to repeat two science events yeah not revise them exactly so I might want to revise an earlier science event in the future which will cause both of these to flip again mm -hmm. and this happens to all players around the table now if you really didn't want to flip that card there are lock tokens that you can acquire throughout the game 
time, specifically by going to places like the locksmith here, which mm -hmm. sells them for either two or one money. Whenever you acquire a lock token, you're going to place it on an available event in your time machine. And so each event can only hold at most one. Mm -hmm. And now when you're required to flip the event, you can optionally choose to discard the lock token to keep it in its current position. And the last thing is in addition to players events, city tiles are also flipped each time somebody captures a revised event. So because this is a blue science event, we are going to be flipping over all three of these blue tiles. Exactly. And you can see what the action is on the opposite side on the tile itself so you'll always know what's going to happen afterwards mm -hmm. some of them are a different color on the opposite side so just so you know and this includes tiles that have uh, player pieces on them right the other types of actions you'll see in your time machine are the ability to reserve an event mm -hmm. and so each player has space for one event to reserve although uh, reserved events can get stolen if players visit the courthouse you can also choose to flip a city tile that you might need mm -hmm. or you can also flip your own event so if i really needed the revised versions or vice versa i can take this action to flip my own event mm -hmm. each player will start the game with one side job and like we were mentioning earlier this is a private objective card you have the opportunity to acquire more of these by visiting say the capital mm -hmm. but you can only ever have maximum four side jobs per person so if you already have four you can always replace ones that you already have mm -hmm. and at the end of the game those are going to score you additional merit which are the victory points in this game and the last thing is players have the opportunity to acquire time machine upgrades by visiting the engineer these upgrades are placed in one of the action spots in in your time machine, making that specific action cheaper. Yeah, it's a permanent time gem there. And again, on your turn, you're only spending three movement points, and that's going to be split between the map as well as your time machine. Mm -hmm. Once you're done taking all your movement, then your turn ends, and at that point, you would refill the event displays. Sure. Once everyone's taken a turn, then the round ends, and you would place out the enforcers onto their next locations, revealing a new card each for the next round. So we have telecoms and the courthouse, and then these two would go out, and then we'd reveal the next two. So you know exactly where those enforcers are going to go from the next round on. So you want to avoid these two locations. Exactly. As soon as a player has either completed all four of their faction objectives or captured nine events to fill their entire time machine, that triggers the end of the game. You finish out the current round so that all players have had an equal number of turns, and then you go into end game scoring. At that point, you would earn merit points for all the events on your timeline, according to what side is actually attached to your time machine, which will hopefully be way more than this yeah, <laughs> in good. a true end game scenario. Mm -hmm. Throughout the game you'll also be placing your markers on each of your goals as you complete them and at the end of the game they'll score you two merit points each and just a quick note just because you completed an objective during the game does not mean that you're going to earn those points for sure if something causes your timeline to change making this objective no longer true then the marker is actually removed and uh, you have to complete it again. Back to the drawing board. There is one exception, and that is if you are the player who ended the game by completing all four of your objectives, then those objectives become locked, and now nobody can undo them. Mm -hmm. You also score each of your side jobs, and so side jobs can be scored multiple times, but you can only use each event once per side job. Any leftover time locks on your events will score you two merit points. Each upgrade is one merit point. You'll also score one merit point for every 10 money that's still in your possession. And finally, every three resources left over will also score you one merit point. And at that point, whoever has the most merit points is the winning time lancer. Now that is generally how you play the two player game. Um, I do want to mention that at different player counts, you're going to be playing with a different number of enforcers. Mm -hmm. In addition, there is a solo mode that's detailed in the rulebook that we did not go over today. But for more information we do encourage you to check out their kickstarter which is linked in the description below now if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can and thank you all so much for watching the video we hope you enjoyed it if you'd like to see more like this in the future please consider subscribing thank you thanks bye